This video is brought to you by ChemPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solution for everyone and everywhere. And this video is also brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me back at home in Colorado, finally at the office. Uh, one week ago, we posted our delivery video of our Tesla Cybertruck. This is the Cyber Beast. And well, it certainly isn't looking as clean as it did when we took delivery in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, in fact, after one week, we already have 4,500 miles on our Cybertruck, and I've learned so much about it. So in this video, I wanna tell you about what we did over the last week, how the truck has been performing, give you some of the data that we've captured on it, such as efficiency and other numbers as well for the nerds, uh, tell you my impressions, wanna go through what people have been thinking. Of course, we've met probably hundreds, maybe even thousands of people driving this all across the country from Florida to California and back here to Colorado. And uh, it is something that is wild. This is truly one of the most exciting cars of uh, probably our generation. It is insane. So I wanna tell you all about what my first week of ownership has been like with my Tesla Cybertruck. <laughs> Well guys, it all started one week ago in Florida. Alyssa behind the camera was with me. Alyssa, what was your impression when you saw our Cybertruck for the first time? I mean, it really is, it's something, it's, it's eye-catching, it's unique. Um, do I think it's the prettiest looking thing compared to like our Rivian over there? No, but um, yeah, it's really cool. It's a lot of attention. You have to have a pretty high level of a social battery in order to drive this around. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's been fun so far. We've done a lot of great, you've done a lot of great things with it. I flew back home and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It's back. So let's walk everyone through the specifications really quick, how it all worked out. Um, by the way, like I mentioned, this is the tri-motor version. So we paid just over $120,000 for this one. We got it through the Tesla referral program, which is how we were able to get an accelerated delivery. It was an official program from Tesla. A huge thanks to you guys for using the out-of-spec codes. In this case, I used out-of-spec Dave's referral points to get this truck. And uh, also we took delivery in Florida. It all kind of worked out uh, for that. So my dad has had the chance to drive it now. He actually has a video on his YouTube channel, Out of Spec Dave. And um, what else should we say? It's about 124 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. They, Tesla says 123, but when I went 100 to zero, I used, I got to pull 124 out of it. According to the screen, near as makes no difference as we would say. Uh, it has, I don't know how much horsepower, seven, eight, 900 horsepower, something like that. It's really quick and it certainly feels quicker than this. This has been my daily driver for the last, rolling up on almost two years now, at least a year and a half. This is the quad motor Rivian R1T uh, launch edition and this one is 835 horsepower and this is faster no question this is faster and there's also been drag races between the two this is faster Do you, does it matter that your pickup truck is really fast no but it is fun and I have been using beast mode quite a bit <laughs> I've been ripping it um, it has uh, again range I think Tesla says like 300 just over 300 miles of range that is not accurate in any way. In fact, the Cybertruck is not EPA tested. This is not run through any EPA cycle because it's over, I'm trying to think, it's got an over six foot bed and its GVWR is quite high. Um, or maybe it's based on total vehicle weight of just about 6,800 pounds. A combination of weight and bed size means that this qualifies as a truck and doesn't need to be EPA certified, which means the numbers Tesla gives us for range are numbers they could just make up <laughs> and they don't tell us what drive cycle they run it in now i hope they're based on some repeatable drive cycle like a two cycle epa or a five cycle epa but we're just not sure in the real world this truck is a on the highway cruising at 75 80 85 miles an hour this is a just over 200 mile range truck um you know it's it's realistically if i was you know if someone asked me oh how much range does it have i would say somewhere between 250 and 260 miles uh realistically because most of 
when range matters is on the highway and that's what you'll get at around 70 miles an hour. I've run a 70 mile per hour highway range test in the Cybertruck before with my friend Ben's truck in Florida and uh, we did 254 miles from 100% to when it stopped moving and completely died. But And that feels about what this one will get as well. I really don't feel like the tri-motor is much less efficient than the dual motor. In fact, I will do a video comparing them in the very near future. So I think that's enough about the truck. Come along the side, look at how dirty we have gotten it. First of all, driving through Florida and the southern part of the US, we caked this thing in bugs. Absolutely murdered the entire mosquito population of northern Florida with this thing. And that's great. Uh, we don't like mosquitoes, but you know, Tesla says this is the world's toughest truck. However, um, they also say in the owner's manual, don't leave insects on it. How can it be the world's toughest truck if you can't leave insects on it, Alyssa? No idea. I don't know. Sounds like a big problem. I'm ignoring all of Tesla's recommendations and we're gonna test to see what happens to our truck uh, before we wrap it. Colton from Out of Spec Detailing asked me not to wrap this truck for six months. And so I said, cool, let's see what happens to the metal. Either way, I personally don't like the stainless steel. Uh, it gets really hot, it gets really cold. I just think it looks uneven and unfinished unless you really take the time to take care of it, which Colton can do. And he has some Cybertruck customers that are coming in for the works and he's gonna get their trucks dialed in. But for me, I think we're gonna do a wrap on this after about six months of ownership. And again, I have no intention of flipping this truck or selling it for a profit. We bought this to make videos with, and uh, we're not, you know, I think there's 30 Cybertrucks for sale on the market as of today, Alyssa. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that plays out with them. Yeah, I don't know if Tesla's gonna go after them or if they can go after them. Of course, if you own something, you should be able to sell it. That's my personal viewpoint, um, but Tesla disagrees and they're trying to, um, I would say, discourage uh, flippers, if you will. So we have, of course, a layer of bugs and grime from the Southern part of the US. And then in the Northern part of the US, we got mag chloride, salt, sand, and schmutz, technical term, all over this thing. So it was driven through ice and snow and crap and you know you can't even imagine come on back this way i actually think it looks great dirty i think it looks better dirty than clean what do you think Alyssa? <laughs> it looks disgusting but yeah, yeah the it, rear camera doesn't work by the way oh yeah it's a little too muddy they, they put a washer on the front camera but not on the back camera not on the back the camera most, yeah it, i mean a truck should be dirty and that's one thing a lot of people disagree with Colton. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, but they're like, oh, you're spending so much money on a truck. It should be pristine, should be clean. It's like, well, no, it should be dirty. It should be going in mud. It should be having fun and doing truck life stuff, not a pavement princess stuff. Absolutely. But. And we've treated our Rivian the same way we've treated this truck. We have put this thing through everything. We've had it off-road, on-road. I've towed with it a bunch. Everything we've done with this truck to really learn it, we're going to do with this truck. And um, actually, in our next video, we're going to kick off our truck comparisons because we have the F-150 Lightning over there. In fact, we have two of them. We have a couple Rivian R1Ts. We have our Cybertruck and also a friend with a dual motor. And we have two Silverado EVs as well, one with the medium and one with the big battery. So it's gonna be a crazy week and a half to two weeks of just towing, hauling, off-roading, uh, ripping up canyons, doing everything we need to do to test them. So I think, uh, let me just give you my impressions of this truck after spending, again, 4,500 miles in it. The first thing we really did with it was drive it nonstop from Jacksonville to San Diego, racing these three other electric trucks. Now, not this particular Rivian, but um, you know we had a really great time, and those videos will be coming in the next week or two on the Out of Spec Motoring channel. They're gonna be multi-hour long, three-part series of this truck race across the US extravaganza. It was pretty incredible. You know, we set a speed limit cap, so we weren't doing anything too stupid. It was all about the range and charging and charging performance of networks. It was really amazing. I bought a truck to use it as a truck. So let me show you one of my favorite things about this vehicle. It is this, the vault, the power vault, the power tonneau vault. There it goes. This is amazing. Now we've had the power tonneau on the Rivian. Which actually it just got, it just got done. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's well, brand let, new now. Let's check that out in yeah. a second because I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. That's right, we picked, you picked it up from yeah. service, thank you. Um, I also have the wheel covers in here, also shipped to me from my friend Ben. I'll leave his channel linked in the description. But the problem with these is they chew into the tires pretty hardcore, so we've removed them. Also, are there four in there, Alyssa, or just three? There's four. You see the fourth? One, two, three, four, yeah. Okay, good, because I left the tonneau open one day in California and I didn't realize. Oh. 
And the, it, the app sent me a notification. It said, hey, you parked your truck with the tonneau open. I was asleep. <laughs> and so, so I was did, like, did a lot of good things for you. <laughs> yeah, I hope nothing in California happened. So I love yeah. this power tonneau, this yeah, vault. It is, it's so smooth. I mean, compared to the Rivian, it is so smooth. And you can control it from the app really nicely. I mean, that's what yeah. Tesla gets right, the integration of yeah, everything. Yeah, they do. They and, do. And so I just absolutely love that. The one thing is it gave me a notification the other day and it actually stopped it from working because I used it three times. Oh, wow. Maybe four. I brought it to the EVgo uh, testing laboratory and we were able to CCS charge it and do a bunch of stuff. It does CCS charge, by the way, on certain chargers. There's some Even bugs. Even the flap thing? No, we had to remove the whole side panel and I couldn't take really? photos because we were in the lab. Yeah, and the adapter doesn't interface into the charge port here. So we had to pull, pull the panels off, rip this off, get the CCS adapter in and then charge it. The CCS t official adapter is only rated for 500 volts, not a thousand. And we were charging this at 800 volts. Wow. Uh, so we just like stood back a little bit, yeah. but it was testing. We're in the laboratory. That's what we do. Um, but I hope Tesla will come out with an official NAX to CCS thousand volt rated adapter that interfaces into this port. So I don't think it's a bad thing that it doesn't fit because um, if the thousand volt one does fit, then we're at least preventing potential issues uh, by using a 500 volt rated adapter. So um, while it was in the laboratory, I was using the, the power tonneau vault thing and it just uh, threw a warning and it said, hey, it's overheated or you've used it too much. It said excessive use of tonneau cover. It might stop working and it stopped working and it was left open and they basically just shut off that. Now, I, I feel like I only saw it go three times. It's possible it was a fourth, but it wasn't like someone was just sitting there pressing the buttons over and over and over. So I thought that was interesting. They had some sort of uh, longevity software in there so that you don't wear out the motors or overheat the motors. I'm cool with it. It's just like, it seemed like a very um, low amount of power usage. The other thing I've done with the Cybertruck is I've charged another vehicle off of it. I love this. Come on in here, Alyssa. I love that there is a actual NEMA 1450. I can pull 40 amps out of this one continuously. This is so nice because um, I've got 124 kilowatt hours to play with. I want to be able to dispense that electricity into anything I want. And the problem with the Lightning and the Silverado is they do have 240 volt power output, but it's with like a, a welder plug almost. It's a uh, NEMA 1030R. And, you know, I, I work in the electric car world. I always have to charge cars. NEMA 1450 is what most people use for charging uh, electric vehicles. So at least here I can plug in another, I can plug in a Rivian or after a range test, if something dies, I'll be able to charge full power off of this port. This is such a useful feature. I love it. And the Rivian has no 240 volt power available at all, which is a shame, real big shame in that one. And perhaps they'll update that for the next model year. Couple things as well, just while we're back here on the truck, some thoughts on it after living with it. Um, we did some light off-roading, just little things here or there, but definitely in the back of my head, I was thinking, I really wish I had a spare tire. And unfortunately, under here, there's not enough. You can see my, <laughs> my this thing has not been fixed yet. It goes in for service this week, but I think I have to delay it because we have to film this truck. Um, there's no room for a spare tire. And that is like a big miss. For something that's positioned as an adventure, off-road, lifestyle vehicle, you're gonna be taking it, at least we will, to Moab to have fun. There's a bunch of cyber trucks at Moab this week. Shout out to all my friends out there having fun. Wish I could have joined them. Um, but yeah, crazy. The Rivian spare tire, Lightning spare tire. What, what the heck, Tesla? This thing needs a spare tire. You can buy a spare tire for and just throw it in the bed and they position that as that's their spare tire solution but i could just buy any tire and throw it in any bed and i think that's dumb uh, another thing that's actually worked really well uh, on this truck have been the doors they have worked without fault without issue at all uh, they they open they close uh, the plunger works pretty well and i'm saying this because we have a model s we've owned a few model s's and every single model s i've had has had door handle issues and our model x we have to fight the doors to open them this one, really nice doors. So getting in and out of this is a breeze. It's no issue at all. Reminds me of a microwave thing. <laughs> I will say like most people, when they walk up to it, they're like, how do I, they stand there like this. Cause I'm always like, ah, oh, go sit in the truck at a supercharger or something. And they stand there like this and they're like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, push the button and they go like this and they think it's capacitive. And I'm yeah. like, no, you really have to freaking push the button. And I think that's been interesting just watching people and how they, operate with the vehicle. Uh, another big positive has been the hyper wiper. Hyper wiper? That's what I call it. <laughs> it goes so fast. 
and it cleans so well. And I'm so impressed with this mono wiper situation. It's the future. I'm convinced of it. Okay. I think it's really ugly. Yeah. And, and what's funny is some of its operation isn't that well tuned. For example, if you do a quick wipe coming down the highway, the wiper will wipe and then it sits down at the bottom. It will park itself in this position and you can feel the air resistance of the wiper and it's doing it so that the water that it's pushed down here doesn't come back up and streak. But I wish I could hit a button and say, no, return to center, return to the normal position. Uh, the only other complaint of the wiper has been that it doesn't throw enough washer fluid to clean the windshield. Uh, yesterday, driving behind trucks and salt and schmutz and everything in Wyoming, uh, I just held down the washer fluid button for like 45 seconds, it felt like, just trying to get enough fluid dispensed out of that wiper uh, so that it cleans the windshield. And so I just wish I could dial up the flow of the washer fluid dispensing out of the wiper. Um, up front, there's some other issues, to be honest. The headlights are a big problem. They certainly aren't the brightest. They're not as bad as I remember from testing the truck in Austin. Perhaps they upped the power output or the roads really soaked up the light there. I don't know. Um, you know, sometimes dark pavement, it's hard to notice a really bright headlight. These are not really bright headlights or really great headlights, but they're at least acceptable, in my opinion. The Rivian has incredible headlights really good headlights on that one, not here. Um, but yesterday I got snow all smushed in my bumper and I was driving at night and I couldn't see a damn thing. It was like uh, just completely dark. I've had that issue on my Rivian too, where the LEDs don't produce enough heat to melt the snow. However, at least in the Rivian, the snow can kind of just fall off. Here they're stuck in this ledge, this little chip, uh, this uh, chin lip. And yeah, there's just nothing you can really do there. I have gotten pretty good at finding the front trunk latch on the truck now. I've got that dialed. Check that out. First try. Wow. I still need them to dial in the front trunk. And I've uh, been putting my bags up here. I use the front trunk in this way more than I use the front trunk in that. And I think the whole reason is I don't have to lift something up and over. Maybe. And I think just having a feels like a trunk. I mean, you do use the trunk on that that has all of our towing equipment in there. Yeah, for towing, but that, I use that more for storage than I do actively putting my backpack in and stuff. Right. And normally in this truck, what I do is I'll, I'll, you know, open the door, I'll throw my backpack in the back, and then I'll get in. This, I notice I throw all my stuff in the front trunk. So I think it really comes down to the speed at which this operates and, um, yeah, prob probably just the, the low access site. I do wish this was a bigger capacity for storage and it's, um, it's just not. So yeah, there's, that's about that. And watch your fingers, of course, as this comes down, as we have demonstrated. I think we are gonna name this the carrot crusher. It could just be called chomps. Chomps, that's good. <laughs> we'll come up with something, but yeah, yeah we're, you're on the right track there. Um, let me show some, some folks on the inside. I'll, I'll grab the door for you guys. I'll have you sit in the back so you can get the view out the front. Getting in and out of the truck is very nice. I do not set it to auto lower. There is a function where every time you get in the truck, it can just lower down, but I don't use it just for, for wear and tear purposes, more or less. The software in this vehicle has been amazing. I have to say truly in 4,374 miles we have on it right now in one week, we've used almost two point, well, we've used over 2.3 megawatt hours of, con of energy consumption. I've had zero glitches with this truck. Even the trucks in Austin were throwing up weird faults, had weird things. This I've had zero, not even as much to where the screen blinks. I mean, it's been incredibly well tuned and sorted. So props to Tesla for really dialing in this truck. Let's just crack the windows because it gets a little bit toasty in here, which is why I've put in this shade. This came with the truck. And um, that was the uh, $20,000 option, right? <laughs> I don't know if it comes with the foundation series or not, but it came with this one. Uh, we used it just to reduce the HVAC load on the trips. And we'll probably pull that out because I like having a glass roof in the cars, but it was good for the road trip at least, especially maybe if we have the dogs in there or something. Yeah, definitely when the dogs are in here, that's, that's a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what else is good? What else is bad before I tell you about, you know, the data? Well, I love the, the steer by wire is incredible. I've already mentioned this in driving reviews. This is just stuff that I haven't mentioned in videos I want to talk about. 
this is wildly incredible in the city and on the highway, but in any other situation, like if you're driving sporty or even off-road, I don't love the steer by wire so much, but I'd love it for driving around the city. It's just watching Alyssa park the Rivian before. You're like doing this. <laughs> like, well, I just, zzz, zzz. this is the future. You're so cool. <laughs> it's amazing. And it's really cool. I love the steer by wire. Um, the phone charger is probably the worst design part of this whole truck because this doesn't charge your phone. All it does is create waste heat and heats up your phone. Uh, I mean, I put, I sat my phone on this for like three days of driving. And I think over those three days, I only gained 20%. It's just a phone heater. Now you could say, well, all wireless chargers get phones hot. Yes, but Porsche thought about this and the Cayenne and the new Taycan, um, they're, they're actively cooled. They pipe the HVAC cold air into the phone charger so you get a more efficient charge and your phone actually charges and doesn't overheat. This is awful. But then the problem is there's no other place to really put your phone because if you have two cups in here, what do I do with this now? It's like, I can't just slide it in there cause it'll fall over. So what I end up doing is I plug in, I don't even know where it went, the physical cable and I put my phone in here upside down so it can charge. But there should be a little bit, I think, maybe an attachment. I'm sure the aftermarket will come up with some sort of just, I just need a storage bin that's pretty high up that I can just throw junk, like a junk drawer. That's easily acceptable. Just a preference, uh, what, what I would like to see. Uh, I love how much storage there is down below. There is like old Model S type storage where you can just put anything you want down there, which is great. Uh, Rivian is similar. And what else is there to say, Alyssa? about uh, the trucks things we like and dislike suspension's been good i still think they need to dial in the dampers so um you know they have the pressure relief valves on the damper and i think they can make it softer when you put it in a softer setting that's still the rivian gets so nice and comfortable cruising mm -hmm. and uh you know this is probably the calibration the set you know start of production calibration but i'd love to see them dial the suspension in there's so much more they could play around with and just kind of fine tune the comfort and the performance and really dial this thing in a real issue i have with the truck is that i'm not able to turn off stability control uh, in an on-road setting so there's no like slip start there's no way to go esc sport or esc off and to me that really limits the fun that you can have because the truck is so stiff and seemingly well sorted um, it's actually heavier in the rear than the front. Um, you know, you can kind of drive it like a 911 and you feel that you can get some rotation and then it just grabs brakes and slows everything down. And yeah, again, it's a pickup truck, but also it's a cyber beast. Let it do beastly stuff. Let's turn off the traction control here. We'll do all the off-road testing here pretty soon and all the towing testing pretty soon. But overall, it's been a really cool truck. And those are some things I like and dislike. The seats are amazing. The interior quality is amazing. The sound system is by far the best I've ever heard in any car. It is, um, and we got to drive everything. It's right up there with um, like a Bentley name system or something like that. It's, it's incredible. Um, what's up, Alyssa? I have a question. Have you gotten used to the mirror, rear view mirror yet? Yeah, the rear view mirror has been okay. Um, the only problem is here, I'll just show you when you're driving, you can't see anything because it's dirty right now. Right. The, I have another issue with this though, is when I put on my turn signals on the side, obviously it shows the side repeater, but when the tonneau is closed, I can't see what's behind me anymore. What I would have preferred is for them to put the side repeaters here, but then keep my rear view camera there on the screen. Oh yeah, that's because true. Because I want to know what's going on all around me before I make a turn. Um, and so I think that's, that's been my one gripe with it. Uh, but other than that, I've gotten totally used to looking here instead of here. And in fact, I would probably even remove this. I mean, uh, there's no point to it. No, but it, you know, what's nice is like if the dogs are back there, that's what I want to see if I can keep an eye on them. Oh yeah. With this. Keep so. an eye on the kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the, the nanny cam. The nanny cam. Yeah. Could be interesting. The shifting uh, doesn't bother me as nearly as much as the Model S does only because it's right close to the steering wheel. So I can just go up, down the Model S. I feel like I have to reach farther for yeah, and the Model do. 3 Highland. So that really bugs me. But, you know, all the Tesla stuff here is amazing. The dash cam, the, the built-in Spotify, the software, the route planning. It, all, it just does everything so well. We can't even begin to describe how much better this is than the competition. Um, it's, it's incredible. The Rivian software is incredible as well. And their software team is, I would say, almost second to none. And, you know, I love Wasim at Rivian. I think he's doing an incredible job building a ground-up platform for that vehicle. You can just tell like Tesla still has some features that I'd love to see Rivian kind of implement and they are, and that has some features that I'd love Tesla to start to implement. So it's really cool to see these two 
you know, automakers battling for the best in software when every other automaker is so far behind. doesn't matter who they are. I'm looking at you, Ford. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they really need to overhaul everything in the software on that truck. Um, that's an amazing truck. I love the Lightning. I actually uh, enjoyed driving the Lightning instead of this at certain times, especially with driver assistance, which brings up another point, Alyssa. This does not have autopilot still. Yeah. What's up with that? Still. And that was part of the really expensive upgrade. Well, autopilot's included. It. Right. But FSD we paid for. I'm okay if I just have, I don't even want to use the FSD stuff. No, I just want base. Like it too much. Yeah, I just want base autopilot. And it's like, come on, crazy. Yeah, some people have argued that they're just waiting for more data on the trucks and having more trucks out there. But I'm like, that's BS because they have enough data from all the other cars. This isn't that much bigger. Yeah, than I, the Model X. I mean, who knows what the real reason is? Yeah. But when you bring a car to series production and your company is known as one of its core pillars of expertise in driver assistance and your brand new flagship product doesn't have your other flagship product built into it, crazy yep but they're not having any issues selling these it was legs, actually so. kind of funny everyone was trying to pawn off the cyber truck on certain legs they're like oh i want to drive the lightning i want to drive whatever the rivian and <laughs> i was like oh i'm stuck with this thing i gotta drive so okay let's talk about where we went the data i'm going to pull out my laptop let me show everyone what we've done because i logged everything on teslify and we've also logged everything on another app called tessie I've always been a Teslify guy, but there's so many of these Tesla tracking apps. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, let's run to the back of the truck. I'll pull up Teslify and show everyone what we've done with this. This is Teslify and Teslify is a service that we'll leave our referral code linked in the description below, but it's something that really logs all of the data of your Tesla. And I've used it for our vehicles for a long time. Um, and what am I trying to show you? Let's go to the month view. So we'll go to drives and we'll go to, whoops, calendar month. I keep it logging. I don't use this every day. Really the only time I pull up Teslify is when I'm making a video about our cars, but I love it. So we've driven 4,358.72 miles logged. Again, there's always some sway here. Sometimes it loses connection. It tries to make things up, but you're always within a percent or two. It is averaged just under two miles per kilowatt hour, which I would agree with. I would say cruising at 80 miles an hour, this is a 1.7, 1.8 mile per kilowatt hour truck, somewhere around there. Um, efficiency is 73% of rated. Kilowatt hours used, 2.2 megawatt hours. And we've been driving 75 hours and 17 minutes. So here's the day, I guess we picked it up. And here is today. So I think it's a week and two days that we've had the truck. I thought it was a week exactly. And you picked it up on a Thursday. No, it's Saturday. So mm -hmm. excuse me for the intro. Uh, and here's everywhere I've driven it. We've driven it from where we took delivery in Jacksonville, Florida. We went down, hung out with your grandparents, raced it across the country, 30 different charging locations we stopped at. The Silverado only stopped at 10, and that's just because of the charging curve on this one. I won't tell you who won or lost or anything like that because you'll have to wait for the video. Then we drove it from LA, had it pretty high charged there, drove it up to Salt Lake City. The only reason is I-70 was closed at the time, but then by the time I got to I-80, it was closed and then I made it home. So that was the, the trip, and the first trip in the Cybertruck. Let me give you some data. If I come here to charge summary, I love this one. It will tell me what percentage of the charging has been supercharging or DC charging. So 85% has been supercharging. 2.3% has been CCS charges. By the way, the, the Cybertruck does not support Chatamo charger. Uh, we tried it. doesn't work. This was at the EVgo testing laboratory. We did, I don't know, maybe 100 kilowatt hours or something like that. And then AC chargers, 12.7%. Uh, this will start to increase the more time we spend at home. It's always good to AC charge your cars for the grid, for the battery, everything. Um, but this has a ton of DC charging, as do all of our vehicles, because we really do use them. But uh, at least when we're not using them, I set my charge limits usually to 50% every day. The battery lives between 30 and 50. It's the best for longevity. And um, that's just where most of our cars sit for storage is about 30 to 50% state of charge. So that AC charging percentage will start to increase the more we have the truck here at the office and at home and using it normally. But again, the first bit of this trip was really hitting all of these superchargers. Uh, by the way, the charging performance of the Cybertruck has increased. It's gotten better. And what I mean by that is it has now, here, let me 
I'm just dealing with uh, right so the cool thing about this is now here's all of our top charging destinations everything like that um, it now charges full power until 29% state of charge instead of 25% state of charge Wow Whoa. Uh, I have heard rumblings that maybe a charging improvement could come in the near future we'll certainly be keeping our eye on it testing it um, but we seem like we're on revision two of the charging performance of Cybertruck. The Austin trucks would hold 250 kilowatts to 25%. This will peak at 328 kilowatts um, now that they're NAX compatible and CCS compatible. Uh, 326 kilowatts, I think, actually is the most we've ever seen at like 2%, and then it walks its way down. Ultimately, most people are only using version three superchargers with Cybertruck. And with those, you uh, hold 250 kilowatts to 29% and then it tapers off and uh, it's actually not bad they've really beefed up the the top part of the charging curve it just kind of sits at 80 kilowatts all the way to almost 90 percent so yeah it just kind of comes down and then trails off it's way better than the not way but it's still a bad charging curve compared to other electric vehicles on the market but it's better than what we originally saw in austin so i have to retest it relog it and we'll be updating that what i don't know is if that's because this is a tri-motor and they did something with the battery pack or if all of the dual motor and tri-motors got this software update time will tell i'll, I'll run it my friend eric from the derek youtube channel just got his sick wrap on his by the way really love it sort of a digital camo color um, his is a dual motor, so we'll be able to use his truck and this one for, for some comparisons. Uh, I just kind of want to end the video. We'll go back outside with everyone's general response to this truck, what we've seen driving it and talking to hundreds of people. And then, of course, uh, that's kind of our one-week ownership experience wrapped up for you. I'll give you some final thoughts, but um, yeah, let's go out there. Alyssa, before we talk about that, I forgot we were going to check the tonneau. So this is my first time seeing it. This is the updated one? Yeah. Oh, boy. It's yeah. slow. And it still clunks. I mean, it just sounds louder and crunchier still than the, than the cyber. But at least it works. The gaps here are much smaller. Wow. This is like one giant piece all the way from here to here. So it's a totally different tonneau. But leave it open. Why? Because we got snow in there. Oh, okay. Okay. It just sounds like it's under stress. It's, it doesn't sound any better than it was right before it broke. So <laughs> okay. the trust in it is... Um, you can now order it on a new Rivian for 500 bucks as of today. Yeah, that's funny that they're not including it. Yeah. Um, okay, so everyone's reactions to the Cybertruck. Alyssa, I thought when we first took delivery of this, we would be dodging bullets. I was like, thank goodness it's bullet resistant because... We're driving around in this crazy triangle. You Everyone really online thought people were going to do literally dodging bullets. You thought people were going to shoot the car? Well, in certain areas, I had a guy in Wyoming ask me if he could shoot it. Well, that's very Wyoming ass. Yeah, I know. I thought that was awesome. Cuz they hate EVs. No, no, he was cool. He loved it. He wanted to just test it. Cuz they, oh. you know, they claim bullet resistance. He was like, "Oh, dude, sick truck. Can I shoot it?" And I'm like, "Sorry, I'm driving through. If we shoot it, I want it to be on YouTube." No comment. <laughs> um, I thought everyone was going to hate this, Alyssa, and they don't. Very, I think out of the whole country, I got one out of hundreds, maybe even a thousand people. Well, I shouldn't say that because I also brought it by my friend Matt Ferris' place at the Smoking Tire, and it, it, their reaction was different than most people, but they're also car reviewers and in the world. Generally, the general public loved it, and people online hate it. And so I don't know why there's this big disparity between the comment section and real life, because yeah. even just driving it around here in town, people are like, whoa, they're struggling. I had a dude, oh, it's so funny. Driving through this little town in Wyoming yesterday, I go by like an Applebee's in Rock Springs or something like that. And this dude looks, he goes, whoa, he runs and falls over trying to run in to get his phone, I imagine, to take a picture. It just causes chaos wherever you yeah, go. Yeah, it definitely causes chaos. And I, I would also say that I don't think a lot of people are going to walk up to somebody's truck who just just bought it and say, hey, I really, really hate it. Um, because when I've just kind of sat around it and people don't know, because they don't think I drive the truck or anything like that, then I hear a lot of negative comments as well. Huh. So I yep, think could be. there's a lot of um, just being there in person, you're representing your truck, people are going to be like, 
oh, no, man, it's really, really ugly. Why would you ever buy that? Um, well, I had one guy who said that. He said, you couldn't pay me to drive that thing. Um, yeah, I mean, there definitely was... are people who are strong enough to do that. But I think the general public's not going to just outwardly tell you your truck is come up to you, take time out of your day to tell you your truck's ugly. But, but you know, I get that, Alyssa, and I think there's definitely truth to that. But the number of thumbs up and waves and, like, excitement oh, yeah, that it gets is certainly i think far outweighing the negative yeah it's, it's, it's a social battery tester for sure yeah you have to love talking to people because you have to give a full product presentation at every charging stop you yeah. get all the tesla owners that come around you're like okay here's how it charges here and i'm like i'm sell like i'm not a tesla salesman yeah. <laughs> like why anytime, is it my job anytime you stop you any stop is a 30 minutes you have to a lot in order to yeah. get in and out you'll get to know all your neighbors all the people you never met before you'll make tons of friends and probably enemies but uh just really I, I'm just blown away by the, the response of everyone. And um, yeah, so I did a, a, um, a podcast with my friend Matt Farah from The Smoking Tire. He drove this, as did Zach. And they were like, actually, I, well, you'll see it. it and I'm going to let them borrow this and make a video with it because I think um, th they definitely have valid points. I don't disagree with anything they say. Uh, so yeah, it was all pretty funny. They were just like, whoa, the build quality is terrible. This is going to kill someone. And I'm like, yeah, maybe just don't walk in front of my truck. I don't know, you know. It's kind of my thought on it. So anyway, um, the public reception's been been far superior uh, to to what I expected. I mean, far more exciting uh, than I than I expected. The uh, the overall experience with the truck over forty five hundred miles is one that I can come away with a few words. High quality comes to mind, which I can't really think about from any Tesla we've had in the past. This is certainly the highest quality Tesla I've ever purchased or driven. It's put together really well. I have a couple rattles inside, two rattles, and that's really it. Some of the body panels need some finishing, but honestly, so did they on my Rivian and so did they on our other cars. But I just mean by like the solidity, the amount of insulation that they put in this vehicle, it's unlike any other Tesla before. That is 100% accurate. It is so much better. So I'm loving that. The power and acceleration is phenomenal. This thing boogies and it digs, it goes. It's got so much traction off the line, which I wasn't expecting from these Goodyear tires. Uh, by the way, these Goodyear tires are really capable of a lot of things, but they're not amazing in any category. And one category they really struggle in, I've learned, is snow and ice. They suck in the snow. There's just, they're not triple peak snow rated. Do not drive these in the winter time. I was coming down I-80 and I was just like hit a snow patch and you're like, whoa, sideways. And also I think Tesla needs to tune some of the regen drag control stuff because I went into regen a couple times. It didn't quite unlock the wheels in time. And I was just like getting some opposite lock on uh, in some very slippery conditions. So, um, you know, we're all Nokian tires fans here. I run studded winter tires on my Rivian. Obviously I'm spoiled, but you should be safe driving in adverse conditions. Don't use these in the snow. That's my recommendation. Um, yeah, just, just an awesome vehicle. Steer by wires, next level. The, the excitement that it brings to people, it creates a whole new generation of car enthusiasts, I would say. So I'm excited about that. The technology is amazing, the integration of everything. And what I love is that we're at day one of Cybertruck. This is very early days. There is so much optimization and improvements and things that, yes, have to come, especially with autopilot and some other things needing to come in the vehicle, but also things that I hope Tesla will really focus on, which is some of the performance aspects, perhaps also letting us do some off-road modifications. Maybe there's a way we can get sway bar disconnects on this thing. And the aftermarket certainly is going to go crazy with this as well. And that's why I bought one. Uh, that's I want to cover all of these advancements, all of the future things. Um, you know, do I like it more than my Rivian? I can already hear the comments section. I, I don't, it's close, but I still think the Rivian, you know, is uh, something really special. And that's an amazing product from a really cool company. And that Rivian is, uh, that, that truck's been through a lot and it has never really let me down. It's been amazing. So this one still has to earn its place as my number one truck spot. The Rivian still holds it, but this is different. It's exciting. It's interesting. And I'm so glad that I've had the opportunity to, yes, own it and now have it for one week and 4,500 miles. It's, uh, it's been a dream come true. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Stay tuned this week. Subscribe if you're not, because we're doing all the truck comparisons. But I wanted to get this video out of the way first for you so uh, we can really hit the next uh, few videos with this sort of review out of the way. One week with a Cybertruck. My final review is not just one thumbs up, two thumbs up. It's amazing. Thanks for watching. See you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.